March 4th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 19 from the New Testament. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. Now a man named Zacchaeus was there. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to get a look at Jesus, but being a short man, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him because Jesus was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, because I must stay at your house today. So he came down quickly and welcomed Jesus joyfully. And when the people saw it, they all complained. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. But Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, half of my possessions I now give to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone of anything, I am paying back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this household, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. While the people were listening to these things, Jesus proceeded to tell a parable, because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. Therefore he said, a nobleman went to a distant country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. And he summoned ten of his slaves, gave them ten minas, and said to them, Do business with these until I come back. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to be king over us. When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he summoned these slaves to whom he had given the money. He wanted to know how much they had earned by trading. So the first one came before him and said, Sir, your minna has made ten minas more. And the king said to him, Well done, good slave, because you have been faithful in a very small matter. You will have authority over ten cities. Then the second one came to him and said, Sir, your minna has made five minas. So the king said to him, And you are to be over five cities. Then another slave came and said, Sir, here is your minna that I put away for safekeeping in a piece of cloth. For I was afraid of you because you are a severe man. You withdraw what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. The king said to him, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked slave. So you knew, did you, that I was a severe man, withdrawing what I didn't deposit and reaping what I didn't sow? Why then didn't you put my money in the bank, so that when I returned I could have collected it with interest? And he said to his attendants, Take the minna from him, and give it to the one who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten minas already. I tell you that everyone who has will be given more, but from the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine, who did not want me to be their king, bring them here and slaughter them in front of me. After Jesus had said this, he continued on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. Now when he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, telling them, Go to the village ahead of you. When you enter it, you will find a colt tied there that has never been ridden, and tie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, just say, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent ahead found it exactly as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying that colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and had Jesus get on it. As he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he approached the road leading down from the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if they keep silent, the very stones will cry out. Now when Jesus approached and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you had only known on this day, even you, the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embarkment against you and surround you and close in on you from every side. 
They will demolish you, you and your children within your walls. And they will not leave within you one stone on top of another, because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. Then Jesus entered the temple courts and began to drive out those who were selling things there, saying to them, It is written, My house will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of robbers. Jesus was teaching daily in the temple courts. The chief priests and the experts in the law and the prominent leaders among the people were seeking to assassinate him, but they could not find a way to do it, for all the people hung on his words. God, I think about how you've left us in charge down here. (laughs) Many days, I'm not sure why you did that, why you entrusted us to carry on and tell people about you. I think about the story about the the ten servants who were left to their own devices um, and each had a minna, about three months wages, and what they did with it. And I love thinking about the story and the talents that you give us, that from the time that we are put here on earth, we are already prepared with gifts and talents that you've given us to go and do the work that you have prepared for us. Yet out of fear of man, fear of ourselves, fear of gosh knows what, we don't use all those talents. We don't use those gifts. I was thinking today about how disjointed this body of Christ is that you've called us to be part of and how amazing it would be if each of us did our own parts. Not to be fearful of what you've been given us. But to have the courage, just like you told told Noah, I'm right here with you. I know you can do this. I already gave you the skills to do this. Now go do it. So one, to have the courage to live up to what you've already given us. And two, to quit looking at somebody else's gifts and desiring those. Or thinking that maybe we could do them better than the people who had those gifts. I just think how amazing it would be and how much we could actually get done if everybody worked in this body of Christ. And I love that example that you give us as a body of Christ. You know, how much harder is it and how much more do we have to adapt if we had a body, but we were missing our arms and legs or we were missing our eyes or we were missing our head. How much harder would that work be for the remaining body to get anything done? So today, God, first and foremost, I just praise you and thank you so much for the amazing gifts and talents that you handpicked for every single one of us. It's incredible to me how perfectly my gifts fit in with somebody else's gifts that fit in with somebody else's gifts to get ministry work done. It's kind of crazy awesome. I thank you for being so intentional about what you have given us. And then allowing us and empowering us to go out and use those gifts to your glory. Thank you for trusting us. Still not sure why you do, but thank you for trusting us to go out and tell other people about you. And God, today I ask that you remind us of those gifts. That you help us uncover the layers of filters of this world that have hidden those gifts. Where we've wrapped them up in a cloth and put them away. Help us find that courage and that that motivation and that desire to use our gifts, not for our own ego, but for your glory, for your kingdom, for this amazing body of Christ that, truth be told, especially here in America, is very disjointed. Oh, remind us all today that every single one of us is a part of that body of Christ Every single one of us has opportunities and timing and plans that you have set before us that are unfolding before us. And I get really excited at this adventure that you've put me on and what does that look like and how how incredible it is to get to use my talents that you've given me on this particular ministry when you showed me this ministry and a lot of these things weren't even available yet. I remember looking at the plan you showed me, God, and going, yeah, half of this we can't even do because the technology isn't even there yet. Um, 
And look now how technology is now merged in perfect timing with the gifts that you've given me. And we can glorify you through the Daily Video Bible. Ah, I just love it. God, thank you so much for the unique gifts and talents that you've given every one of us. Allow us to multiply them over and over and over again to your glory. In your son's name we pray. Amen.